All right guys, so you are considering putting a golf simulator somewhere in your house and you're getting concerned about the width of the space that you have. You're realizing that it's not quite wide enough and you're gonna have to hit from one side or the other depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed and not be able to hit from the dead center of where you want your screen to go. When you do that and you're not able to hit from the dead center, we call that offset. So your hitting strip or the area that you're gonna hit from is offset from center. It's actually extremely common because most people don't have the width that's necessary. Generally, you're gonna need about 15 feet, give or take, of width to be able to hit from the dead center. And most people just don't have that. So if you don't have that 15 feet or so, you're gonna have some amount of offset from the center. And in this video, I'm gonna go over how that works, how simulator software lets you adjust for that so it's not that big of a deal, and I'll show you just kind of how it works in my simulator. So let's get going. Okay, so in my space, I have just almost exactly 12 feet from wall to wall in my garage and the space that I put my simulator in. It was one of my biggest concerns before doing it because I was really worried that it was gonna ruin the experience, that I was gonna be all crowded over on the right side and it just was gonna be a total mess that I spent a bunch of money on and it just wasn't worth it. Obviously I did it and you can see here, I've got the uh, Carl's Place C-Series enclosure. This is the eight by 10 and a half enclosure and the 10 and a half is the perfect size for me um, because you do need uh, a little bit of play and it can't just go right up against the wall. So the 10 and a half foot size is perfect for me. And like I said, 12 feet um, of width wall to wall. So I do have some offset. Right now, the golf ball is sitting right in the middle of uh, my hitting strip. And it's about 20 and a half to 21 inches from what I think is dead center. Uh, dead center, if you can't see it, would be probably about right there. Obviously, uh, I, I would hit the wall with a longer club. So <clears throat> right there is where I've got it. So one question that a lot of people ask is, do you hit uh, straight or do you hit at an angle back towards the center of the screen? You definitely wanna set it up to where you're hitting straight. Pretty much all simulator software, all real simulator software has a way to adjust for that. And I'm gonna go over how to do that in GS Pro how it works in FSX Play and other FSX software, and also E6 Connect. You should note that some of more of just like the driving range software does not allow for uh, offset. And so I'll show you what that looks like as well. So let's show GS Pro first. All right, so we're in GS Pro. There's multiple ways to edit the offset in GS Pro, so I'll show you each one. First way would be to go into the settings and then visual settings. And you'll see over here, screen offset. Um, and you can adjust it for both left-handed players and right-handed players. I'm right-handed. I don't have any friends that are left-handed, so I don't worry about that. But I just make sure that you put in the screen width and then the offset for right-handed players or whatever it is for you. They have it in millimeters. I'm not aware that there's a way to change it into inches. So I just do a millimeter to inches conversion on my phone and enter them in right there. To me, this is the most accurate way to do it. If you just take a tape measure and figure out exactly what your offset is and then put it in here. Now, the other way to do it, I'll show you uh, right now, but it's a little bit uh, quicker and easier to adjust on the fly. Okay, so I'm in the driving range, uh, which will be a little bit easier to see since you have that uh, straight line down the middle. Um, and right now it's set up at the offset that I normally have it as. But if you hit the L key, that brings up some lighting adjustments. And down here at the bottom, you have the offset editor and you've got sliders. So on this right hand position, I can just grab the slider and adjust it where I need it to go. Um, and so you can do that just until it looks right to you. But like I said, I prefer to do it with the exact measurements in the main GS Pro settings. Um, but this is another way that you can do it quick and easy. Just hit save and exit and there you go. So those are the two easy ways to do it in GS Pro. Okay guys, so now we are in FSX Play and I'm gonna show you how this works within FSX Play and also the other FSX software. It's all the same. If you have a Foresight launch monitor 
or a Bushnell Launch Pro, um, you have access to this. We're in the driving range again, so you can see that nice uh, target line. And uh, we're just gonna go up here to settings and then down here to room config. And this is the tool, the room configuration tool that shows where everything is in your simulator space. So you're going to set up your launch monitor. I have the GC quad here and I'm gonna switch it over into inches. And you're gonna put in the height and width of your screen. And then down here under device distance, you wanna put in your distance from the screen to the front edge of your launch monitor. And then for two center, you wanna put it in uh, the distance from your launch monitor to the center of where the image is. So basically the center of your screen. And then surface height would be if uh, your hitting surface is on a different level than everything else. So just wanna be careful that whenever you measure from the screen, you wanna to go to this like leading edge, this front edge of your launch monitor, and also to center this front edge of the launch monitor, again, to the center of where the screen is. So in my case, it's about 40 and a half inches. Um, it's not asking to where the center of your hitting strip is over here. So it's gotta go all the way there. I've already got it set up with, with mine, but uh, you just enter that information in, click save. And then now, basically it's got the configuration of the entire room. So if I drop a golf ball down, and I have it kind of more over here, it adjusts the image to where the golf ball is. So um, like the GC quad has a pretty large hitting area and I could use any part of the hitting strip here and it will adjust the image. So it's a very cool feature. The other thing is that obviously it's got the ball launch data and it kind of knows the, the three dimensional space of your simulator. So instead of uh, showing the golf ball on the ground on the software, um, it kind of knows where your golf ball is in the room and it'll pick up the ball flight where the ball should hit the screen. So um, like if I just show a little bit of a, a chip here, so you can see the ball kind of picks up right where it hits on the screen and continues the flight. So it makes it a very realistic looking ball flight instead of seeing the golf ball on your screen, you know, launch in front of you, which is about 10, 11 feet in my case. So it's a very cool system for how to handle the simulator space and connect it to the software. Really cool actually. So that's again, all the Foresight software, but I'll also show you how it works in E6 Connect. So let's take a look at that. All right guys, this is the E6 Connect home screen. I am using my iPad Pro with an HDMI connection to my projector. You're gonna to go to the main settings, which is that gear icon over at the bottom right next to the shopping cart. Click on that and then you're gonna click on simulator and go to projection dimensions. And here's where you can enter in all your screen dimensions, your distance from the ball to the screen. And in my case, since I'm right-handed, T position is on right. And then the booth center offset would be the number basically from center, going from the center, basically where I'm standing right now, to the offset to the ball. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it works very similar to FSX Play, where it wants all of that information. I don't know that the ball flight is as accurate where it's gonna take off like that, but it adjusts the image to include kind of where you are in the room. So it kind of uh, takes that into account with the image that it shows on the screen. You wanna do this before you start a round or before you go to the driving range, because once you are playing, you cannot access the simulator dimensions. So you wanna do this from the beginning. And once you do it once, it stays that way. Let's go to the next thing. Okay guys, lastly, we are in the Unicore View software. To my knowledge, there is no offset adjustment in this software. Just wanted to show you kind of what that looks like. And in this case, it's not too bad because I am right-handed. And if you look at the screen, it's got kind of the menu down the left side that pushes everything to the right, which kind of helps with the offset a little bit. You just have, kind of have to get used to the idea that um, what happens on screen is not going to be necessarily exactly uh, fitting to your eye. And uh, you know, like I said, it's not too bad because of this menu on the left, 
but the target or the ball flight kind of looks like it's taking off kind of where my feet are, which is just about the center of the screen. As far as I know, this view software doesn't have offset adjustment yet. Maybe it will someday. And then also I know that the flight scope app, which you would use with the Mevo plus doesn't have that as well. And I think the thinking behind that is that these are more of like driving range apps. They both uh, work with iPads or whatever. So obviously if you're running it on an iPad and maybe you are out at the real driving range with your launch monitor, offset doesn't matter. You're just gonna pick it up and look at it. You don't have a, a screen in front of you, but real uh, simulation software should have offset adjustment. And I went through most of those for you. It's really no big deal. And like I said, most people have some amount of offset because they just don't have the space. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you're considering putting a simulator in your room and worried about it, don't worry too much. Just make sure you have enough room to swing a club. Me personally, I like no less than what I've got here, which is 12 feet wall to wall. When you get shorter than that, maybe you won't be able to swing driver or some of your longer clubs, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So like I said, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.